you might have an Excel situation where you need to find the last non-empty cell value, whether in a column or in a row. Things can get more difficult if you look up the last value based upon a condition. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you six methods to look up the last non-empty cell value, from simple to mind-blowing methods. Whether you have dynamic array functions or not, this tutorial has you covered. Let me know in a comment which method you prefer. Without any further delay, let's dive in. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and read the step-by-step -step instructions by clicking on the link below this video. In this worksheet, I have a list consisting of four columns and multiple rows. I want to create a function that allows me to extract the last record. If I add more records, it will always return the last one. I'll be using a lookup function, but let me explain the concept of this function. I want to evaluate column A to find the non-empty cells. Then I'll be typing equal. I can select the entire column, although it's not a good practice, but I can also specify the range where I'm searching. What if I type A1 colon A50? That's way beyond the number of records I have. If it's not empty, double quote, double quote. When I hit enter, I get a bunch of trues and false. True means it's not empty. False means it's empty. I want to convert the trues into one, and I'll be doing this by dividing one by this formula. So I hit F2, and right after the equal sign, I type one forward slash, I open bracket, I want to include the formula in brackets, the denominator, when I hit enter, I get one, and division by zero error. I'm going to wrap this formula in a lookup function. The lookup function defaults to an approximate match. So if I'm looking up a value that is greater than one, it will keep searching for it. When it doesn't find it, it will bump into the last one, which is the last record. I put my function in the edit mode by hitting F2, and right after the equal sign, I type lookup, and then I hit tab. What's your lookup value? I type any value that is equal or greater than one. I'll be using two. You can use any other value, then type a comma. What's your lookup vector? My lookup vector will be the entire function that returned one and division by zero error. And then I click after the closing bracket and I want to provide the result vector. I'll be using the same range from A1 to A50. And then I close the bracket for the lookup function. When I hit enter, I was able to extract the last value. I can copy this function to the right to extract an entire record, and I can expand the column if I wish. Then I'm extracting the last record. Let's test by adding more records. I have some records here below. I can copy them or cut them, Control X. If I paste them below the last record, Junior Mills should be the last record, and sure enough, my function is working just fine. Can I use the same function for returning the last value in a row? Yes, sure, I can do that. Equal lookup, and then I hit tab. My lookup value is 2, comma. My lookup vector, I'll be using the same exact trick. 1 divided by open bracket. I want to select, let's say, in row number 6, I'm selecting from A6 to L6, and then I ask, is it not blank? And I close the bracket. I type a comma. My result vector will be the same exact range from A6 colon L6. And I close the bracket. When I hit enter, it returns the last value in row number six. If I delete this value, then it's returned in California. If I skip some cells, and in the same row, I type my name, when I hit enter, that will be the last value. If I type a number 785, then it's returning the last value in row number 6. For the next example, I'll be using an offset function. Many Excel users try to avoid the offset function because it's a volatile function, but let's explain the concept. The offset function requires a starting cell, and my starting cell will be cell A1. From this cell, 
the starting cell, the next argument, how many rows up and down would you like to move? And the next argument, how many columns right and left would you like to move? I want to move down 12 rows in order to reach the last record. And I don't want to move any columns right and left. So how do we build this function? I want to use a count a function to provide the number of rows needed to move from A1, the starting cell, up to the last row. In cell G1, I'll be creating a count a function. So I type equal count a. I want to count, let's say, in the range from A1 to A50. I close the bracket and then I hit enter. It says 13. But because I want to move to the last row, then I need to count from A1 down to row number 13. I need to move 12 rows down. And I'm going to put my function in the edit mode F2 and I type minus 1. When I hit enter, I get 12. That's the number of rows needed for the offset function. Let's wrap this function inside an offset function. I'm going to put it in the edit mode. I'm going to cut this part, control X, and start creating by offset function equal offset, and then I hit tab. What's your starting cell, which is the reference? I want cell A1, comma, how many rows up and down? I use my count A function, control V, and then comma, how many columns right and left? I don't want to move any columns right and left. I type zero and I close the bracket for the offset function. When I hit enter, I was able to extract the last value in column A. I can copy this function to the right to extract the entire record, and here is my entire record. I can also test by adding more records, so I have some records to the side. I'm going to cut them, Control X to cut. I put them here below, and I paste Control V. The last record should be for Joanne, and sure enough, my offset function is working fine. In the next example, I have a more complex situation because I have a list which shows a product sales and date, and I would like to extract the last sales transaction, not in general, but for a specific product. I have a drop list in cell F1 from which I can select a product. I'm selecting product 5, and I want to extract the last sales amount corresponding to product 5. And I'll be using an index and a match function to do that. The index function will return a sales amount from column B, but it needs a row number to return the amount that we want. And to do that, I'm going to use a match function. So what if I type an equal sign and I ask, is any one of these products equal to what I have in cell F1 when I hit enter? This is what I'm getting. If I get it true, that means the product is equal to what I have from the drop list. I want to convert the trues into ones, then I'm going to put the function in the edit mode, and I divide one by this formula. One divided by, I open bracket, and I close the bracket after F1. When I hit enter, I get either a division by zero error or one. So if I put this formula inside the match function, the match function with an approximate match will search for a bigger value. When it doesn't find it, it will return the last occurrence of one, which is the position of the last record for product five. Let's put this function in the edit mode F2, and then I'm going to cut this entire part control X and start creating my match function. Equal match, and then I hit tab. What's your lookup value? I type a value bigger than one. I type two, comma. What's your lookup array? I paste my function. And because the match function has a default of approximate match, I can simply close the bracket and then hit enter. The last record for product five is at position number 12. Let's put the function in the edit mode F2. Cut this function, and that's the second argument of my index function. So I type equal index, and then I hit tab. What's your array? I need the entire sales range. I select the range from B2 to B14. I type a comma. 
from which row you need the return value, I paste my previous function and I close the bracket for the index function. When I hit enter, that's the length sales amount corresponding to product 5. I can change from the drop list and select product 2, that's 136. I can change and select product 4, it will be $60. For method number 4, I have the same exact work situation, but I'll be using an XLOOKUP dynamic array function. Equal XLOOKUP, and then I hit tab. What's your lookup value? I'm looking for product 5 or whatever comes from the drop list in cell F1. I type a comma. Where do you look for it? I look for it in this entire range of products from A2 to A14. And then comma. What's your return array? I need the sale. Then I'm selecting from B2 to B14. I type a comma. If not found, what do you want? I'm going to skip this argument by typing a comma. And here it asks me about the match mode. I want an exact match, so I'll be using zero for exact match. And then I type a comma, and here is the important argument. The default is to search from first to last, but I want to search in reverse order. I want to search from bottom up. I want to search from last to first. Then I select the second option, minus one, and I close the bracket when I hit enter. I was able to extract the sales amount corresponding to the last record where I have product 5. If I change from product 5 and select product 4, then the last amount is 136 and my function is working just fine. I used the next lookup function for this example, but in method number 5, I'm going to take this xlookup function to the next level. In this example, I have a list consisting of five columns and multiple rows. I do have some blank cells in between, and I want to extract the last non-empty cell in column A, and I'm going to use for that a wildcard inside the xlookup function. So in cell H2, I'll be typing equal xlookup, and then I hit tab. What's your lookup value? I want to use a wildcard. What does it mean, a wildcard? In double quotation, I type a star, which is one of the wild cards, and the star is a replacement character for any number of characters from zero to infinity. So when I type a star, that means anything. And then I type a comma, where do you look for it? I look for it in column A. I can limit the range from A1 to A50, so I type A1 colon A50. And then I type a comma. What's your return array? My return array is the same exact one from A1 to A50. And then I type a comma. If not found, what do you want? I can skip this argument by typing another comma. And here is an important argument for the match mode. I want a wildcard character match. Then I type two and then comma. I don't want to search from first to last. I want to search in reverse order. Then I type minus one, which means search from last to first. I close the bracket, and when I hit enter, I was able to extract the last value in column A. What if I type a different value? I'm going to type hello in cell A18. When I hit enter, it's extracting the last value. But what if I type an empty string? I type equal, double quote, double quote. And if I hit enter, it says, well, the last value is this empty string, and H2 looks blank. And I'm going to solve this problem by using a second wild character. So I put my function in H2 in the edit mode F2, and right after the asterisk, I'll be typing a question mark and another asterisk. The question mark is a replacement character to one single character. So when I include it between two asterisks, that means I need any return value which includes at least one single character, whatever precedes and whatever follows that character. Now if I hit enter, I get hello, and that's exactly what I want. However, if I go to cell A20, and I type a number, let's say 951. When I hit enter, it's not perceived. 
because the wild characters are expecting characters in the lookup range. Then I want to solve this problem by using another dynamic array function. I put my function in H2 in the edit mode by hitting F2, and I want to wrap my lookup array in a function that converts any number to text. So I type value to text, and then I hit tab, and I close the bracket after the lookup array. I don't need to do that for the return array, so that I maintain the real data type. Text will be left aligned, numbers will be right aligned. I hit enter, and I would have solved the problem. If I have text or numbers, then this function will work just fine. I can create the same exact function to return the last value in a row. So let's say I'm looking at row number 8, and I want the last value in row number 8. I'm going to do that in cell H1. I type equal X lookup and then I hit tab. My lookup value will be double quote, asterisk, question mark, asterisk, double quote. And it's the same concept that I just explained. And then I type a comma. What's your lookup array? Let's select row number eight from A8, let's say to N8. And then I type a comma. I want the same return array. I select the same range from A8 to N8, and then I type a comma. If not found, I skip this argument. For the match type, I want to use the wildcard character, then I type 2, and then comma. I want to search from last to first, then I select the argument minus 1, and I close the bracket. When I hit enter, I'm getting the last value, which is the buyer's name. It's not perceiving the numbers until I put the function in the edit mode F2 and I wrap the lookup array in a value to text function. I close the bracket after N8 and when I hit enter, I get the correct result. I can test by typing any text or by typing any other number and my function is working just fine. I showed you five methods to look up the last non-empty cell value, whether in a column or in a row. Write me down in a comment which function you like most. The next method is the most robust and dynamic one, where I have thousands of sales transactions. And because each client placed many orders, I just want to extract the most recent transaction for any selected client. If I select a different client, I get the last transaction for that client, and so on. I used a very nice trick in Power Query to create this beautiful solution, and I want to share it with you in a separate video. So subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be notified when I post this amazing solution. And if you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.